my sweet friends. How are you all doing? My name is August. This is Cozy Rosie Reads. And today we're doing something different, something special. I'm going to be doing my April TBR, which is different than my normal TBR jar challenges. So if you're new here, welcome. Typically I do a TBR jar challenge where I pick prompts that help me decide what books I'm going to read in a month. But April, April is different. And I've had this like weird ritual routine something that just like really uplifts me and makes me really happy slash like tradition thing that every year on my birthday or like my birthday month i pick all of the books that i feel like i've been saving for my birthday month <laughs> and it's like a lot of like high stakes it's a lot of pressure because it's like these are books that i've been waiting to read like i've been waiting for the right time the right season and there's something so magical to me about birthdays and the month of april itself is like rejuvenating it's spring things are coming alive the world feels a little bit more rosy and cozy to me it's like more pink and we're coming out of winter so i'm gonna be going through my bookshelves which are overflowing right now to pick out the books that i want to read for my birthday month to make it that much more special so these are books that i've accumulated for a while and I've just been like sitting on because I've been wanting to save them for like a special occasion almost. It's like a delicacy, like they're like desserts and sweet little books that like I want to cherish and I think that they're going to be five star reads. So I hope you all are doing really well. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really, really excited to pick and go over the books that I have in mind because I know I have a few already in the back of my brain that I'm like I feel like I have unintentionally been saving it for my birthday month but this month in April is going to be fantastic I have so many books I want to read so I think I'm going to start actually with like the books that I most recently picked up that I was like oh my gosh this would honestly be perfect and I'm already feeling really strongly pulled to read them right now. I think as like readers or people who like do this where they accumulate a lot of unread books, there are just some times when you're like you pick up a book at a bookstore and you want to read it immediately but then you feel guilty about your backlist like all these physical books that I haven't gotten to yet and I feel really bad about it. I'm like oh I want to read it right now but I have so many other books so I feel like in being able to choose my own TBR, not using prompts, not feeling like I need to read books that I've been on here longer, because I still want to read them. This is just a chance for me to pick up the books that I specifically really, really want to read. So without further ado, I'm going to show you some books that I just recently got that haven't been featured on my channel at all. And first, we're going to start with the first book we have, which I have definitely seen around town. I've seen this cover. I've always been intrigued by it. I think it's a stunning cover. It is so my jam with the aesthetics and the color and it's so springy it just screams april to me and that is the idiot by alif batuman i not 100 percent sure if i pronounced that correctly but this cover is everything to me this aesthetic and i found it used at goodwill for like 99 cents it's just this pink color i just it's a bar of soap i want it I want to eat it so beautiful and it's like really well loved which i love so i'm so happy i found a copy of this and it's so pink can you tell i love the color pink so this is a book that takes place in 1995 which is honestly perfect because it's also the year i was born you know birthday month perfect and email is new celine the daughter of turkish immigrants arrives for her freshman year at harvard where she signs up for classes and subjects she has never heard of befriends her charismatic Serbian classmate Svetlana and almost by accident begins corresponding with Ivan, an older mathematics student. It's about coming to grips with the ineffable and exhilarating confusion of first love and with the growing consciousness that she is doomed to become a writer, our main character Celine. It also says in the book it's easily the funniest books I've read this year. I just coming of age, like early adolescence, early adulthood, 1990s vibes. This is it. This is 100% the kind of book that I want to read. And it's a little bit more of a narrative. Lately, if you've been here for a little bit, I've been picking up a lot of like smaller books that maybe necessarily don't have much of a plot, have very ambiguous themes and characters, which is 100% my jam. But every now and I definitely still want to read books that have narratives and I feel like this is a perfect one. Again, I just like can't stop touching this. It's like, it's like a stick of butter. Like it's just so nice. So that is the first book that I'm going to be adding to my April TBR. I'm so excited. I was so happy to see this just chilling at Goodwill. Like 
the powers of thrifting, my friends, the powers of thrifting. So that is the first one. Then the second book that I also found on that Goodwill trip that I have not showed you that I definitely want to read is The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. This was a tricky find. I was like very casually going over the Goodwill shelves. I wasn't like rummaging through because I was like, I really don't need any more physical books on my TBR. But this one didn't even have a spine. So I was just curious, pulled it out, turn of the screw. So there is no back plot either. Uh, so I do believe this is like an indie publisher, but it was originally published in 1898. This is a like horror novel that follows, I mean, I could honestly be butchering the, <laughs> the plot because I'm not super familiar. The turn of the screw is honestly just like such a ubiquitous title. I feel like so many of us have heard of it, but for me personally, I just haven't had the chance to read it or know much about it. So from my vague understanding, it's about somebody who goes to an estate um, to watch over these kids and they're very odd. They're very peculiar children. So either way, I'm just very, very excited. The font is very tiny in this copy, but I like how slender it is. That's a paperback. I'm really excited. This is like a classic, but I feel like it's going to be haunting and fun. And I'm excited to finally read a book that I feel like I've heard of my whole life and to understand my own opinion on it and to read it through my own lens. I'm just really excited. So let's turn up the screw. Another really great find. So those are the two books that I got at Goodwill very recently, actually in my last reading vlog. So I'll link that down below. I didn't show you all what I got there, but these are two of them. So first two books of my April TBR. I am stoked. That being said, now we actually have to like comb through my bookshelves and figure out what else do I want to read. So typically with like my TBR jar prompts and my challenges, I pick 10. I don't ever read all 10, which is wild because when COVID first hit and the pandemic hit, I was reading like 12 to 14 books a month but since life has started back up I'm realizing like I have not read like more than like 10 books in a month since like the start of this year I don't think like it's been very hard to do that on top of everything else like just living and working but I think for this video I do want to pick around 10 books so that way I always have something to choose from so like depending on how I felt about my last read I still have options. I think that's just really nice. It works well for my brain because I am equal parts like I need structure, but I also want to be a mood reader and choose like how I'm feeling on that particular day or after reading something else, if that makes sense. So now let's see what else we have and what else is like kind of pulling to me. Da, da, da. I have so many wonderful books that I want to read. Ooh, I know. I know exactly which one I want to do. This was featured in my winter book haul and I have just been very eagerly waiting to pick it up because it seems 100,000% my style. And that is Reckless Appetites, a culinary romance by Jacqueline Duvall. I love this cover. I love this cover. It is stunning. It's author pick on the back. I love it. So I found this in the $1 section of an independent bookstore that I go to. So this is, oh, it's just beautiful. So this is another like 1990s literary fiction and it was published in the 90s. This was published in 1993 and this book tells the story of a beautiful young woman named Pome or Pome, I have to look that one up, a passionate cook with a restless hunger who looks to the lives of great writers to shape her own romantic and creative life. Pome's Holmes' tale is woven through an inspired blend of fiction, literary fiction, and culinary anecdote, deliciously uncovering nearly 100 recipes. So there are recipes in here, which I think is really cool, but I love literature about cooking, about food, and then blend it with this like romantic, creative, almost artisan, bohemian lifestyle. That's kind of the vibe I'm picking up. So when I first read it, just to see if I was like going to engage with the writing style, because I was like, okay, I've seen books that incorporate recipes in them. Like I'm thinking of like Under the Tuscan Sun. Is that one? But I also read one like a few years ago that was about a, a husband and wife who moved to like the countryside of Italy. And it had a lot of recipes, but it was nonfiction and it was like a little like a little boring. So I wanted to see if I fit with this one because it is fiction. It reads, imagine a woman. Her name is Pome. She is in love, alone in her room, but not lonely. She is spending the evening with Colette in mind, seeking the secrets of her own appetite. Ah, 
god, beautiful. And Colette was a French female author, if I'm remembering correctly. So literary fiction, literary references, cooking, reckless appetites, Jacqueline Duvall. I'm here for it. I'm so excited for this one. So this is definitely going on to my April TBR as well. I'm stoked. Mm, 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 mm. So I'm definitely feeling spring light but very poetic reads. That is definitely the vibe I'm feeling so far for April. So let's see what else we have on here that I'm kind of feeling. Oh my gosh, yes, it is time. It is finally time. I really would love to read Pond by Claire Louise Bennett. Absolutely stunning cover. I found this one in the used section of that same independent bookstore probably last year, like last summer, I want to say, and I didn't get around to it. I'm so excited for this. I've heard amazing things about Claire Louise Bennett, some of my favorite booktubers who have very similar like taste in literature that I do. I'm thinking of like Rebecca Eats Books um, and The Linen Librarian. Really love Claire Louise Bennett's writing style and I feel like I'm gonna totally jam with it. That's why I picked it up before I heard anyone talk about this. So I did pick it up and then I started hearing Claire Louise Bennett all over the place. So I was like, okay, I had a good pick. This follows an unnamed woman and it chronicles her life on the outskirts of a coastal village. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Love, love, love. Just like so observant and it's just a lot of like descriptions of ordinary life, which is something I am so here for. I love it, especially in shorter, thinner books where it's a little plotless. It's a little meandering, a little aimless, ambiguous, confusing, but just has these like beautiful details of life that I just, it just makes me salivate. So this one says the charms of bananas and oat cakes in the morning and Spanish oranges after sex, the small pleasures and anxieties of throwing a party, sitting in the bath as it storms outside. So it is going against the usual conventions of narrative. Pond refracts the narrator's uncannily intimate experience in the details of daily life, rendered sometimes in story-like stretches, sometimes in fragments no longer than a page, and suffused with the almost synesthetic intensity of the physical world as we remember it from childhood. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I've been saving this one for a time when I wanted to feel poetic and romanticizing my own life and my birthday month is the perfect time to do that because a lot of changes are happening. If you were here for last week's reading vlog, I am leaving my part-time job. I am going through a lot of big life changes right now that are all kind of happening at the same time and now more than ever I really want to be surrounded by literature that both inspires me and keeps me creatively fulfilled and inspired because I am going into a full-time self-employment art world. So I really need inspiration. Winston just woke up. Do you need help? Do you need help? There you go. You just look so tiny right there. But yeah, I'm gonna be adding Pond by Claire Louise Bennett on here. I'm so stoked. Here is what our stack is looking like so far. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, what else are we feeling? What else are we feeling, friends? Ooh, yes, okay. I would love to give this one a go. This is another newer book that I got. Same used section of my independent bookstore uh, a little bit ago, but I don't think I've talked about it. It is The Imago State by Caroline Georges. Georges? This sounds so rad. Again, another female author and then female protagonist. So this is translated from French um, by Rhonda Mullins. Rhonda Mullins did the English translation. So this book was originally published in 2017 and it sounds so rad. It leads with, is it possible to live your entire life online? In this ominous, numbed out tale, our heroine, having spent her traumatic childhood in front of the television and her youth modeling in Paris, successful because she has the blankest face and is the perfect mannequin, holds up in an apartment and dedicates herself to being reborn into her ideal digital existence. She has entirely retreated from the world, cultivating transcendence from the physical and emotional realms through her virtual reality avatar. But when her mother, a reminder of her terrible past, becomes gravely ill, she is forced to leave her cocoon and re-enter the real world with all its pain and imperfections. So again, we have another slender, smaller book. I love, <laughs> I love where this could go. I'm very, very intrigued living an online existence. Um, I struggled like daily with the idea and thought and concept of social media. I am either like, okay, it doesn't really matter. I can post whatever 
or I'm like, why am I sharing this much information online? This is not normal and I shouldn't know all this stuff about other people. It is like this huge duality in my life daily. <laughs> I either love it or I literally resent it. So I think having something like this in a literary format, I'm just like very, very excited for this one because it's, again, narrative and it has a plot and it has a story and characters, but even opening it up, it does look like there are almost these kind of little vignettes. Things are a little bit sliced. It might be segments and snippets of past and present and then the virtual reality kind of thing. And then the growth or the changes or transformation that comes when dealing with family and trauma and past. So the Imago State, I am very excited for this one. So we're going to add that too. Okay, what else are we feeling? Ooh, okay. I am feeling this one. I feel like this has been on my spring TBR since I started my booktube channel last year. I just desperately want to read this book in spring. It is a little bit bigger and it is a classic, but like I really deeply want to read this book. So we shall see if I will actually get to it because honestly this whole stack is just delicious and I want to get to every single thing on here. So can I prioritize a bigger classic? Anywho, that book is Watership Down by Richard Adams. Found this copy thrifted. Love. It's like it's just a really, really floppy old paperback. Timeless classic about rabbits. It's set in England and it was a once idyllic rural landscape. It's a tale of adventure, courage, and survival and it follows a band of very special creatures on their flight from the intrusion of man and the certain destruction of their home. So it is this colony of rabbits that then have to travel from their native land through all of these like horrible things through predators and adversities to a mysterious promised land and a more perfect society. I am so excited. I don't know why I have just like always wanted to read this one. Classics usually intimidate me a lot, but lately I've been getting way more into them and like Watership Down is one that like I have just continuously wanted to read. So like I have to, but I I hope, I genuinely hope I can get to it in April, but if not, I will still have this copy and I can get to it eventually. Or maybe I start it and maybe I don't finish it until like May or June, who knows, because it is a little bit chunkier. And chunkier books have been intimidating me a little bit more lately, which is sad. But Watership Down, we're gonna add it. We're gonna do it. Okay, so we have six books already on our stack now. Four more, around four more. I don't need exactly four more, but let's take a peek shall we oh my gosh yes i i forgot about this one but i'm so excited yesterday i went grocery shopping with my partner and we had to swing by dollar tree super quickly i looked in their book section didn't see anything new you know it takes them a while to restock books it's awesome that they have new books like brand new books for one dollar it is amazing well it's a dollar 25 now but it's okay my frugal little cheap heart was a little sad about that, but it's okay, $1.25. And I found a brand new hardcover edition of a book that I very recently, probably in the past like week, put on my want to listen list on Libby as an audiobook. Found a hardcover copy, and that is A Wonderful Stroke of Luck by Ann Beatty. Mainly it was a cover thing. When I saw the cover, I was like, I want to read this. But then I saw the plot and I was like, I really want to read this. But instead of having it as an audiobook, I can now have it in a physical format and it's not even that chunky. This sounds very interesting, kind of like dark academia because it takes place at a boarding school on the East Coast in New Hampshire. Our character Ben joins the honor society led by Pierre Laverdere. Laverdere. <laughs> Why am I... I can't pronounce anything today. An enigmatic, brilliant, yet perverse teacher who instructs his students not only about how to reason, but how to prevaricate. Mm, what does that mean? As the years go by, Laverdere's Laverdere. This is when it would be helpful to have the audiobook version, so I know how that's pronounced. Covert and overt instruction lingers in his students' lives as they seek some sense of purpose or meaning. When Ben feels the pace of his life accelerating and views his intimate relationships as less and less fulfilling, there seems to be a subtext he's not able to access. And what really did Bailey Academy teach him? So it's about this student Ben's relationships with his stepmother and sister, a move to upstate New York. But the appearance and reappearance of this teacher Pierre in his life disturbs him. Everything he once thought he knew about his teacher and himself is called into question. 
wonderful stroke of luck. It says it's a psychological study. I'm a fan. I'm excited. This sounds rad. Love the cover yet again. Just beautiful, stunning. Can't believe I found it. $1.25 brand new. So definitely adding this one as well. Loving it. Okay. I think there is one more classic that I would like to add to this list. One more. And for that one, I am feeling The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Stunning cover. I did buy this one brand new last summer, I believe, and I think I bought it for a vacation I was going on. I didn't get to it, obviously. So it is brand new. Have not opened it really or anything. I've been told that this is actually a really, really good summer book. So I'm curious, you know, if I did get to it, would I regret reading it in more spring? Is this for like a really, really hot summer day? Because I've heard that the descriptions of like gardens and roses and atmosphere is really great in this one. Either way, I'm just curious. It's been too long. I picked this up almost a year ago now and I like desperately want to read a picture of Dorian Gray. It's about a man named Dorian Gray, if you're not familiar with the plot. He is entranced by the perfection of his recently painted portrait and then he wishes that the figure on the canvas could age and change in his place. So when his wish comes true, the portrait becomes his hideous secret as he follows a downward trajectory of decadence and cruelty that leaves its traces only in the portrait's degraded image. I'm excited. I've heard so many good things. I've heard that a lot of people who say like if you're trying to get more into classics, this is a great place to start. I've read several classics so far this year and I definitely want to keep going into them so I feel like this will feel way more accessible to me now that I've read The Honker Middle March by George Eliot, Brideshead Head Revisited, read some Jack London, Candide. Like I feel like this is going to feel way more accessible to me and not as intimidating so I'm going to add the picture of Dorian Gray and this back is like, I don't know if you can tell, it is this like beautiful off pink color. It's just stunning. So we're gonna add this as well. Can anyone else do this with their hands? I just realized I've been doing it nonstop in this video and I'm anxious that like I've been doing it while I'm talking and I'm just not aware. Anyway, okay, so I think I'm just gonna add one more book on this pile because it is pretty big and we're just gonna do nine books. I'm feeling really good about that. I'm gonna add another recent addition to my ever-growing collection. I want to read Swimming Home by Deborah Levy. Got this at my library book sale, used book sale. The cover makes it definitely feel like a summery book. I'm not a fan of this cover. There is a cooler cover in addition out there, but who gives a hoot right now? I don't, it's okay. Another tiny little book. This would be my first Deborah Levy. So this follows a man and he arrives to a villa in Nice with his family in France and he sees a body in the swimming pool, but the girl is very much alive. She is Kitty Finch, a self-proclaimed botanist with green painted fingernails, walking naked out of the water and into the heart of their holiday. Why is she there? What does she want from them all? And why does Joe's enigmatic wife allow her to remain? A subversely brilliant study of love, Swimming Home reveals how the most devastating secrets are the ones we keep from ourselves. I am stoked. I am stoked. This has been on my want to read list for a while. So happy I found a used copy. Very, very cool from my library book sale. So I'm going to add this as well. Again, I feel like, you know, it's, it takes place in like a villa in France probably I'm guessing during the summertime, but I feel like I can read it in the spring and just get excited for summer, get, get, get excited for like swimming and pools and hopefully travel a little bit, going to a beach and like getting excited for summer. I just feel like the writing style of this, I could like really, really fall in love with and I'm very excited about it. So that is my ninth and final book that I'm gonna be adding to my April TBR. Oh my God. I just want to start this pile already. I still have some March books to get through. So my dear, sweet little friends, that is my stack. That is my pile of books that I want to read for my birthday month, April. Woohoo! So many awesome books. I'm just so happy. Here they all are. I am just surrounded by such good literature and it's just so fun to like curate exactly what I'm looking to read, hopefully and just feel really good about hand selecting books that feel good to me right now in the season I'm in right now. 
it feels amazing. It's spectacular. I'm so excited. I still have at least probably like, I don't know, at least 60, 70 books on here that I still want to read and I will get to eventually, but these are ones that like, I'm just so excited to prioritize and get to and hear their stories and tales and tell you all about them. So definitely stay tuned in April for like reading vlogs and updates on how my reading is going with these books. I'm so excited. We've got some little tinies in here, which I love. I would love to hear what you are planning on reading in April. I do anticipate doing a March wrap up sometime soon, hopefully. Um, because I missed a February wrap up as well. So I need to combine and just like have a long, maybe like a coffee conversation about books, like just a long chatty video about all the things that I read in February and March, because there are some really awesome books specifically in March. I've had like five star after five star in March. So stay tuned for that as well. But I would love to hear if you have any reading plans for April or if you're getting really excited to read some books, let us know. So thank you so much for being here, friends. I appreciate you so incredibly much. I hope you all are doing really well and I can't wait to see you all again very soon in my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Stay cozy, my friend. <laughs> Shh. Shh. Stay cozy, my friends. <laughs> Stay cozy, my friends. Bye! Winston! <laughs>